Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Listen, I'm glad to have you guys here. Today is <clears throat> uh, Monday, September 23rd, 2019. Let's get started. Let's, uh, let's open up the charts right here and take a look. Now, here's the thing, guys. I want to give you guys an explanation of what's happening in the deepest parts of the financial system. Picture if an old farmer had a pickup truck, you know, and picture the money in the system is like gasoline, okay? So he gets a plug in his fuel line leading to the engine. Now the engine of the, of the, of the, of the pickup truck is what moves the entire economy. That's the, that's, that's the, the people out there in the, in the, uh, the middle class. That's what moves the economy. Well, he's got to plug fuel lines. So the money, which is the fuel, the gasoline, is not getting to the engine of the economy. But instead of fixing the plug fuel line, letting the money or gasoline trickle to the engine, what he does is he overfills the gas tank. But that gas isn't going anywhere. So a while goes by with his tank over full, he comes up with a great idea to make the economy work. He says, let's go down to the gas station and we'll fill up gas cans full of gas. This is money, you know. So that's what he does. He gets his young fellows to go down to the gas station and fill up all these gas cans full of gas and put them on the back of the pickup truck. More, he says, because the economy's still not running. Things are not running. Well, this is what they're doing. They're stockpiling this gas or money in the back of the pickup truck. It's like what they're doing in the economy. The bankers and the, the highest end of society is getting this money multiplier. And it's basically overflowing with money. And so it's still not getting to the engine, though. The engine of the economy is being starved for gas. Nothing. They're not getting nothing. And we're seeing discrepancies in the economy starting to happen. Weird things starting to happen. Like the things that appeal to the rich to buy. Things like paintings. Uh, and the first class seats on the airplane. Stuff like that. Those things are going up in price amazingly high. Meanwhile, because... The gasoline is not getting to the to the people who need it in the economy. The 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 engine's not getting any gas. In other words, the, the middle class, the people that normally would drive a nice, healthy, strong economy, are getting almost nothing. While the rich are getting almost everything. What's happening is these discrepancies are getting worse and worse within the within the economy. Now, one of the ways we can see this is on on, on airplanes. The first class seats and tickets. The price of those tickets is going up higher and higher and higher. It's amazing, you know? Whereas the, the coach tickets in the back of the airplane, those prices aren't going up so significantly. And we're seeing a price discrepancy happen. We're going to see the same sort of price discrepancy is going to happen with silver. And not too far in the future where the... Where the actual real precious metal, the physical, is going to separate from the paper price. And these discrepancies are only going to get worse as this situation gets worse. And soon, a money multiplier is coming. Now, I am going to do a show, I think, on this money multiplier. And this is what's going to be one of our leading things into our hyperinflation that's coming. So let's get started right here and, and let's take a look at what's really going on. Let's take a look at the price, price of gold and silver today. We're looking at the live gold price right now. And what we're seeing is its tendency is to creep upwards. We're at 15, 18, 30 bid, 15, 19, 30 ask. We're up a dollar 60 on the day. But possibly silver's the big story on the day. It's been really taking a good ride up in price. 1847 today up 50 cents on the day. That's that's a big day for silver. Big day up for silver. 1847 bid, 1857 ask up 
50 cents on the day. That's really nice to see. Let's take a look at cryptocurrencies today and see what's going on. Uh, we're looking at 262 billion. And so cryptocurrencies is down a little bit. It, it's been riding up closer to 268, 270, and now it's down a little bit. 68%. We see the Bitcoin dominance going up a little bit again. It was a 67 point something percent. Now it's 68%. That's a little bit of a bearish signal on cryptocurrency. Uh, but uh, the price has not dropped off significantly yet or anything. I think there's a floor under it around $8,000. But the thing is, is, is I think there's some big price moves coming to the upside later this year when the real trouble hits. Also, I think we're going to see absolutely unbelievable price gains in, in gold and silver later this year as the trouble starts to really hit. And I think the trouble in the economy is really going to start to hit surrounding Brexit. I don't think they're going to get anywhere with those negotiations and stuff. And they got a deadline now. The end of this month. It doesn't look good, I'm telling you. Uh, the backstop is the big problem that is holding the whole thing up. And the likelihood of a hard Brexit appears to be growing, actually. Let's take a look now at the Dow Jones Industrial Average for today. We're seeing it drop down 47 points on news that, that, uh, that Germany is heading toward a recession. That's the thing. A big, big. They put in big, bad numbers. Uh, let's take a look now at, uh, at oil prices. Down 12 cents on the day so far. Uh, really not down significantly. Let me refresh the page on oil. Oh, actually, it's up 17 cents. 58.29 on the day. It's up 17 cents. Is the price for sweet light crude. U.S. Treasuries today. See what's going on here. Uh, we're looking at the yields falling today. Uh, fairly significant falls in the yields of the Treasuries. The largest is a seven-year with a 6.2 basis points. We're looking at 5.9 basis points, respectively, on the 30-year uh, and the 10-year, about the same. 5.7 on the 10-year. Uh, yields falling on the on the treasuries today. Uh, so uh, because the short end is, is, is almost unchanged or moving up slightly, this is heading back toward our yield curve inversion. Let's take a look now at the U.S. dollar index. 98.71. The dollar's riding high and riding strong. I've been saying it for a long time. They're going to rush in. Biggest thing to, things that they're going to rush into when the real trouble starts to hit, the fear starts to hit. They are going to rush into gold, silver, and the U.S. dollar. That's where they're going to head. U.S. dollar, 98.71 on the U.S. dollar index, and uh, we're looking at a strong dollar today. Thing is, is they're going to rush into the dollar, but they're going to see in the end that's a mistake, you know, but it's going to be the biggest mistake ever made because <laughs> they're going to have big money rushing into the dollar. Uh, but like I say, it's like the example I give you at the start where, the, where it's an overflow of, it's like gasoline on the back of the truck. It's not getting through. To, it's not filtering down to the rest of the economy. It's all stuck up there in, in Wall Street and in the banking sector, and it's making the really rich, ultra-rich, where the poor are getting poorer and poorer. And so this is creating this huge discrepancy within the system. And what are they going to do? They're going to pour a lot more, and they're going to create a money multiplier, uh, which is called negative interest rate policy. I heard talk, 5% negative. That's where we're headed. <laughs> it's unbelievable. This kind of thing has never been tried before. It's never been done before. And it's so weird. It's so counter, so counterintuitive to normal monetary policy that it's hard to get your head around it even. That you can actually earn money from borrowing money. That just suddenly, you know, because all the way through history, if you borrowed money, it's going to cost you money. Now it's going to make you money? What in the heck, you know? I mean, this is just weird. Uh, let's take a look now at uh, at the at uh, Germany. 
Uh, this is in the top news. German's private sector is suffering its worst downturn in almost seven years as manufacturing slumps. The manufacturing slump deepens as getting worse, raising pressures on government to add physical stimulus. Uh, that's just creating like more gasoline in the back of the truck, you know, and, and not getting the the more they make, the more they make. It's just not it's not really helping the problem any because it's it's in a liquidity trap. This is called a liquidity trap, is what it's called. Where the banking sector just says, okay, free money, more money, we'll just put it over here. Where we put the other, you know, and it's all, it's, the other's sitting over there in a big heap and it's got cobwebs on it. And they're just heaping more on top of it and it's not going anywhere. It's just sitting there. Ultimately, it's just numbers and they keep adding more and more zeros. Well, that's hyperinflation already here within a certain sector of the economy not filtering its way down into the rest of the economy. Eventually, it's going to have to chase goods and services. Otherwise, it's not real. If it's just digits on paper, it could be $100 trillion, $100 bazillion, bazillion dollars. It's like it's not real until it starts to chase goods and services. And when it does, that's when you see the price of goods and services explode. But... At a certain point, these ones who are hoarding this money off on one end of the economy and it's not being able to go anywhere, it's becoming such a huge, we're talking probably even hundreds of trillions of dollars. I mean, they're just, it's just, they're just, they're creating just piles of it. It does, it's of no use to them. At some point, they have to go after something with it. They have to use, utilize it for it to take on any significant value of mean. It's me, in other words, it's meaningless until it starts to chase goods and services. Until it starts to become real. Once it starts to become real, then yeah, the inflation. Oh, okay. Listen, thank you guys for listening to this show, and we'll catch you guys again very, very soon. Bye, bye, guys.